On today's show, we give you our first impressions with the hands-on review of Ultimate Alliance 3 for the Nintendo Switch. Yes, KB brought it in, and I got to test it out firsthand, and I will give you my thoughts. Also, we talk about some of the bigger news coming out of this year's San Diego Comic-Con. And finally, we'll give you a high-end review of the DC animated film Batman Hush. So join us, will you, on this episode of Free Your Geek. By the power of Grayskull, Autobots, roll out. Two time. Winter is coming. Star Wars. Finish him. Fatality. And welcome to the Free Your Geek podcast. I am your host, Jay Free. With me, per usual, Mr. KB the Geek. Is that your official name, KB the Geek? I don't know. I'm just. You're spitballing. Oh, yeah. Yes, okay, that's cool. You're Jay Free the Geek, I'm KB the Geek. Right, but... Makes sense? Okay, that makes sense. I guess that makes sense. Uh, I always thought that's what we were. So. Well, I thought I thought you were KB the Geek, KB and the I was geek. Jay Free the Geek. KB the Geek, yes. Okay. Yeah, I guess I guess that does make sense. I don't know where I was going with that. I just had a brain fart there for a second. But welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we have a couple different... Uh, this is kind of almost like a review show, if you will. We're going to review Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 for the Nintendo Switch. Um, then we're going to give you a quick review on the Batman animated movie Batman Hush from DC Comics. I recently watched that. I'll give you just my thoughts on that. Uh, non-spoiler. And then we'll go into the big news from San Diego Comic-Con. Um, we're going to go through, I made a laundry list of things, KB, I'll go in order so mm-hmm. we can just get your thoughts on them too. You're kind of not necessarily in the dark about them, but you don't know what I'm going to say. So yep. I, we'll get your reactions out of them. I think it's good that I didn't pay attention to the con too much. This oh, really? Okay. Yep. Interesting. So, well, so you can throw stuff at me and perfect, perfect. But let's first talk about the main piece, the main, uh, the entree, if you will, to our <laughs> podcast today, yep. the San Diego comic-con will be the dessert type stuff. But and you know we'll put the appetizer in the middle because that'll be the the Batman hush. But let's talk about the entree right now. Let's talk about Marvel's Ultimate Alliance Three, the video game. It's exclusively uh, right now for the Nintendo Switch. KB, you brought it over mm-hmm. and introduced me to it. I get to play. This is my first time actually using the Switch in and of itself. Yeah, what'd you think of that? I thought it was cool. Uh, to your point, uh, the screen right now for a portable. Game uh, playing it's device. Small. It's, it's kind For of certain small, games, it's gonna be but small. docking it and seeing it on the big screen was actually pretty cool. Yeah, it's impressive, so. and it's so easy to use and maneuver. Use, yeah. And, yeah, absolutely. Great system, absolutely. underrated. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I know that the the, the switch is like the big thing right yep. now. Uh, so yeah, we got it. I got the first taste. I've already seen the introductory video. The first seventeen minutes of Marvel Ultimate Alliance mm-hmm. three was released online. Mm-hmm. So I watched that. It starts off with the car, uh, the Guardians of the Gar- Galaxy characters, mm-hmm. if I could talk. Um, basically, you just got to feel for the game using those four characters. It's Star-Lord, Gamora, Drax, and then Groot with Rocket on his shoulder. You kind of get used to the game mechanics, mm-hmm. using that team, um, doing a space mission, and then you end up on the raft. Um, that's all I'll say as far as storyline goes, because that first 17 minutes is already... Online, you can see it. So you can see that. Um, all in all, if you're if you're familiar with the other Ultimate Alliance games, uh, it felt right at home. Yeah, it's it's basically a continuation of that. If it's, you think about it, the last one was what 2006, I believe so. Yeah. So we're talking 13 years, and the game feels the same. It feels like by it's a different developer. The too. next chapter, yeah, the yeah. next chapter. But it it definitely works in a lot of the feels and the feelings and the. Uh, ambiance, if you will, mm-hmm. of the Marvel Cinematic Universe yep. too, specifically Super starting off with that. the with the, uh, Guardians. the Guardians. Yep. It's it's you know obviously different voice actors, but for the most part, I think they kind of hit the the feel of it for the Guardians right out of the park. It's like having the MCU in a more kind of animated comic booky state a little bit. So far, that's what it seems. I haven't finished it either. I've only played the first three chapters, um, but overall, I think it it functions very well. 
I think there's a lot to do in it, and there's a lot of builds that we didn't have in the last Ultimate Alliance games with the ISO 8s, the lab that I showed you, the the the, the way they level up. Uh, you know, there are other uniforms and stuff, just like the original game. Um, and then the uh, the the infinite the the infinite, which is like the place where you can do all the like the boss challenges. Like that just adds a whole other like nice dimension to. Okay, to so it. let's let's break it down yeah. a little bit. Lots by of a things. Bit. So we'll talk about the gameplay first. So yep. for those that are familiar with the game, uh, it's going to be kind of a retread. But for mm -hmm. those not familiar with the game, it is in essence is an RPG. Yep. You control four members of a team at a time. Mm -hmm. You can toggle between members as you go along. So as you're fighting, you know, the kind of disposable, the red shirts, if you will, or the boss fights, you can continue to switch between characters. So using the Guardians as the example for what I played through, I can start using the abilities of Star-Lord. He'll start leveling up as I'm playing uh, using that character. But then if I want to switch to, say, Gamora, I can then switch to her and have her lead the charge and lead the rest of the team to follow her. Um, and then continue so forth and so on. Each of them have their own special abilities, but once you get to a certain point, you can do team abilities yep. and even dual abilities. So two two of the Guardians would essentially do a, a tag team move, if you will, yep. um, whether it's to against a boss or whether it's to move to the next level. The example we saw was I had to uh, break a wall, so I used Gamora and uh, Drax. Group. Oh, it was a group? Yeah, yep. correct. You're right. Uh, group for his explosives and Gamora for her ability. And they were able to break the wall. But then again, when I'm fighting a boss such as uh, Nebula yep. or Ronan the Accuser, you can once you reach a certain level with each character, you can do an Ultimate Guardians super move, if you mm -hmm. will. And that's really, really cool. Um, as you continue to th throughout the game, however, you unlock different characters. Um, I believe Spider-Man is the mm -hmm. next one that you unlock after that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that for a fact, but that's the next character we ran into. Um, I didn't play the game all the way through there. Without but, without telling the story, it's uh, the like towards the end of the f second chapter, I think, is where most of them unlock, and then like you know probably like fifteen or whatever of them unlock because they grouping up and forming the alliance, and then the others kind of trickle in as uh, as you go as you go along. And some of them you have to unlock through the uh, the infinite world that they have with those boss challenges. Like we saw Electra on that screen, like you have to unlock it through you know, the infinite challenges. And then others, it's like you just beat the boss battle and then you unlock them, things like that. Um, you didn't get to see a lot of the spider villains yet, which is, um, which are, they're really fantastic, just to throw that out there. But to your point well. then, the game provides a lot of variety yep. as far as unlocking. Yep. Um, the Some of the things I, I did notice from the my hands-on, again, the, the Switch was, it took some accustomed getting used to. It's a little different. I'm a PlayStation person, so when it mm -hmm. says X, Instinctively, I go for the bottom button, which is, I believe, the top button on the or one of the yeah, side. Yeah, because Nintendo focuses on the A B combination, right? Which so A B yeah. would be theoretically the they're like backwards, they're X in the circle yeah. on the PlayStation. So I got yeah. totally confused. It just had a learning curve adjustment there, but the camera work using the stick to control the camera, which is norm for mm -hmm. a lot of these games, I just feel like the camera kind of got stuck in a, a couple different sometimes. places. Yep. Um, but ultimately, no pun intended. Yep. Um, it was a fun, fun game, fun yeah. little uh, foray into that. Um, I'm definitely going to pick it up when the I was debating on whether I want to get the Switch Lite or if I want to get there apparently in mid-August. So about two weeks mm -hmm. to three weeks from the recording of this show. I believe they're going to be coming out with a second version of the Switch for the yep. same price point as the, the, original, the original Switch. Version. But it's going to have a better battery life and have some, some software stuff. tweaks. Yeah. So I might be just wait and pick that up because docking yeah. it was really, really fun. Um, Easy but, to just pick up and go to. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. very mobile. Uh, so I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. But going back to your point, KB, some of the other things other than the actual gameplay is the level of custom customization you can building, do. Building, yeah, building. You know, characters. taking each character. You mentioned that not only can you when you similar to other games when you rank up, mm -hmm. you can essentially increase your attack ability, yep. um, your health. But then there's also what we call ISO 8's mm -hmm. um, capability. So as you unlock these these gems and these fragments, you can do certain things and you can apply them to specific characters. So, for example, I believe yours was what Miss Marvel yep. had one. And she had two. And then, yeah, they depending on the rank of the character, you, you can unlock up, up to four slots. And those enhance certain abilities yep. or health or durability. And some of them have like negative effects, too. It's like you're trading off a positive effect for a negative effect. Which is interesting. So depending on how you want to use those characters mm -hmm. in your game. So yep. it's almost like you have to play a little bit more of a, a strategic... You have to think about it. Like, okay, well, I want to increase 
the damage capability of these, but you know what? Then it's going to leave them as almost like a tank where they'll get mm-hmm. attacked more. Um, so you got to make sure that the health or somebody you have a healer on mm-hmm. something something along those lines yep. as well. Um, to your point, there's also a secondary um, kind of gameplay mm-hmm. where you unlock uh, costumes, and costumes and characters yep. and whatnot, and it's called the infinite. Yep. Um, and then, so that's almost like it looks kind of like almost like Morag from. Uh, the Endgame movies, mm-hmm. uh, or is it Morag or is it Volmir? I can't remember now. Where where was the 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 Soul Stone? I, I can't now. I can't remember. I can't remember either. But it looked like the, the little island, the the world that that was on, that the Red Skull <laughs> yep. showed up on. So that's where you can do all this stuff. I'm going to look that up as we're talking. But KB, what else? Uh, what are some of the other nice uh, features the, about the this lab game? part of it that I showed you? The um, part where you can like when you upgrade abilities, you can upgrade like abilities for the whole alliance. And it's a giant, uh, it's like six hexagons, and it's all based on each hexagon is like a different uh, characteristic of the characters. Um, and basically, you can uh, upgrade all these slots, and there's, there's got to be hundreds of them. Uh, and basically, it upgrades all your characters throughout the Alliance that have you know those certain abilities or health or, or, or whatever. Um, and you use gold for that, and you use these other action points for that, so, or enhancement, sorry, enhancement points for that. Um so that adds a whole other level of like customization. It's like, well, what, which way do you want to go? I mean, obviously, there's so many of these things. I think it'd be hard to unlock them all. But like, you know, which way do you want to go? You know, you more do you want to be more of a health person, like rely on your your you know your your vitality versus your powers and, and that kind of thing. Light attack, heavy attack. Uh, so it's really really good. What I really like about it the most is the art style, and the menu is very intuitive. The menu is very easy. Okay, to, so I want to I want to get to that real quick. To navigate um, around. So that's first my of next all, point. first of all, Vormir. It was Vormir. It was Vormir. Okay, so that's where the Soul Stone was. Okay. Um, before we get into that, because I'm going to ask you what your favorite character is, because we talked about the gameplay. I do want to talk about the graphics a little bit. Yeah. About this, I feel like uh, it was more. It's definitely more of an animation style. It's Comic it's more kind of, of yeah. a cartoony feel to me than the previous Alliance games. Yep. Um, the, what I liken it to is I'm playing Marvel Strike Force mm-hmm. on uh, iOS, mm-hmm. so it reminds me of like some of the character designs there. Specifically, Gamora looks very similar, very kind of almost like a little bit more cartoony, a little bit almost like a mm-hmm. Disney feel to it, if you will. Um, and I'm not sure if that's by design. Or- we, we were talking about this when I when I, on net when we talk about Netflix not being on on Switch, right? A Disney. A Disney Nintendo connection. It could be. It's Maybe. possible. I, I don't know. And why is it exclusive on Switch? Like, why was that console chosen? You know, um, the other thing I have to say about this, if you have played things like, and, and here's, here's something I really want to put out there, is is um, Team Ninja and Koi, uh, the, the, the publishers of this, the, you know, the, 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 the programmers, whatever. Like, they do... Uh, like Team Ninja particularly is known for doing the Dead or Alive fighting series, which graphics are always top top notch in that series. Um, the Koei thing is more the Dynasty Warriors games, which have been on, going around forever. Those are hit or miss. And they're very... They, they, sometimes those games can feel a little bit bare bones. So if you're thinking because of the publishers um, or the studio that this isn't that this is kind of a bare bones kind of game, like like some of the Dynasty Warrior games, it's not. It has a lot um, for characters that we all kind of know and love. Uh, so it's definitely something that pretty impressive, you know, having those those studios in Nintendo and, and just kind of they collaborate on this project. And uh, I think overall, it's a really it's a really good game. It's a great game, I think. And I, I what I found is that at first I was kind of eh, but the more I played it, the more I liked it. So, um, you know, I give it kind of like an eight. If I was going to give it a score, somewhere eight and a half. Okay, I can't give it a score because I haven't played through. I've only Enough. played the introductory. I, I really like it, and yeah. it's it's kind of wet my appetite to want to play some more. Exactly. So and I'll that's kind a of, sign of a decent game, right? Absolutely. And I'll say, starting off, my favorite character of the four guardians that I played is definitely Drax because yeah. he's kind of like the Smash Mouth, the tank. You just yeah. put him in there, and he's very physical. Star Lord is more ranged. Gamora is a quicker character. As is uh, Rocket and Groot, the combination. Or not, that's yeah, yeah. The kind um, of so I'll ask you, you know, having played, you know, enough of the game right now, mm-hmm. so far, who's your favorite character to use? Um, or who? Two. That's a two-parter. Who's your favorite character to use as far as abilities go, and who's your favorite character design so far in the game? My favorite character design, um, Venom. I think Venom is pretty. He's pretty. 
beefed up, you know, kind of like how I want to see him if he's drawn. You know, he, he, he's just very, um, I, I, I don't know how to describe it, but I, I just love the Venom one. That, that's, he's, all, he's all upper body? Yeah, he's, he's a lot of upper body. So that's a good way to put it. Um, Ability-wise, um, the only characters I've unlocked all the abilities for was Deadpool and Miss Marvel. Uh, Miss Marvel's is really good. Um, I know you're not familiar with the character yet, but she her power set's really good. Because kind of like a Mr. Fantastic in a lot of ways. Um, but Crystal from the uh, Inhumans, which was kind of an odd, out-of-place character. It, you know, there's like one Inhuman in the whole game. Um, so she is kind of she has kind of all the powers of like, if anybody's familiar with Nickelodeon's avatar, of, you know, she can bend the elements. So she has powers for fire and, and, and um, you know, ice and things like that. I've only unlocked two of hers, so I'm not fully there yet. But um, if there's an absence of a storm, Crystal kind of takes that, that that place, which is which is really good. Well, that was going to be my next question. Is there any character that you feel has kind of been omitted that you would have liked to have seen in there? Or do you not know? I don't the know the whole list. I don't know the whole list. Um, I don't think so far and that there's any that's been omitted. But it feels to me off the back is that they're going to need more X-Men. And from what I understand from the DLC that's coming out, there's a season pass. It's $19.99. Um, it unlocked Deadpool automatically and gave me a costume for him. Uh, but I think Cyclops and Colossus. So I think some of the X-Men are coming. And that's kind of where the game right now is lacking in this early stage for me. Is The only X-Men there is basically Wolverine. Uh, well, and Deadpool, if you want to count Deadpool as an X-Men. Uh, but no, uh, it, that's where it's kind of lacking. So I hope they get the right X-Men into the game. Uh, what would also be awesome is to have Jean Grey in the game if they could do that, if they manage that, because she wasn't in either of the previous ones. I don't think she was usable, if I remember correctly, in either of the previous games. Um, I'd have to go back and check out Ultimate Alliance 2, but but one, I know she wasn't. Um, so yeah, I mean, it just overall, dude, like I... I I really love the game, and uh, you know it's 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 fun. You know, the more I play it, the more I like it. So, so we'll give a little bit of a not a spoiler alert for the the storyline. You got the character list, yeah. The the non playable yeah, char- the non playable characters are Ant Man, Beast, Black Bolt, Cosmo, Gorgon, Jessica Jones, Lockjaw, Medusa, Nick Fury, Nova, Odin, Professor X, Valkyrie. Vision and Winter Soldier. So a lot of them kind of make sense, but some of them are disappointing to hear that. Like Winter Soldier, that's a disappointment. I thought that'd be cool. Yeah, Black Bolt. If you have Medusa in there, why wouldn't you have Black Bolt? Well, Medusa's not. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Crystal. Crystal. I'm sorry. Yeah, like she's the only Inhuman. You know, or Ant Man. Ant Man was huge. Ant Man's huge. I'm you know, wondering, and so. I don't see the Wasp as a playable character. No. Um, so so yeah, oh, I do. I never mind. I lied. That was I was looking at the boss. So the Wasp list. is playable, but Ant Man isn't. Correct. See, that's interesting. That's that's interesting character uh, selection. So does it have the DLC character lists? Because I don't. I think they've kind of been rumored. It does not. Uh, unless these the uh, DLC characters. I hear one is Cyclops and one is Colossus. That's what I oh, heard. Oh, you know so what? Far. Okay, so if I look at that, let me look at the the footnotes uh, because they do have certain certain characters. Originally a non playable character available as a free DLC character. So let's see who those are going to be. Uh, so we have, I think those are only the only two actually, uh, Cyclops and Colossus are the only two. Hmm. So okay. there you go. So those will be free DLC characters. Yep. And then those will be free and then paid DLC characters are coming too. And those will be, um, let me pull that list up here. Blade. Okay. Uh, Moon Knight. Those are good ones. Morbius. Punisher. Is that just the first pack? Yeah, that's, that... that's that's all that's listed on Wikipedia. This is the Wikipedia entry, so I should kind of mention that. We don't yeah, know. This is not... not confirmed or denied, but that's through Wikipedia. But all in all, I think it's a fun game. Mm-hmm. I think it's definitely worth a... If you if you have a Switch, uh, definitely pick it up. If you're on the fence about it, watch some YouTube videos. And uh, KB already gave it his yeah. final score. So yeah. and If you give it a chance to try it on somebody else's, even better. So basically, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, for your geek on both of those, follow us on Facebook at For Your Geek, and then uh, bug KB to come over your place and uh, bring his switch so you can <laughs> test it out. Uh, that's pretty funny. Uh, before we go to break, I want to give a quick uh, synopsis and review of the DC animated film. Hush. Uh, yes, Batman. Hush. Uh, 
I actually saw a friend of the podcast, Paul Williams, who has his own podcast uh, called What Lurks Behind Podcast Zero, fo- focusing on the world of horror movies. He reviews a different horror movie uh, every week, so you should definitely check that out. We'll link should, that. Where, does he, where, where, where is he? He's at? in Canada. I would love to get on his show then, because you know me in horror movies. Yeah, man. Uh, well, he's he's been asking to get me back on the show. Maybe we can do something. Maybe I'll, I'll reach out to him, but check him out. He's got a great podcast. Uh, if you're into that horror movie genre, he does anything from like deep, like deep cuts to like popcorn horror films um, that you would see in a theater to something that like, where did he get this DVD <laughs> out of, you know, somebody's trunk of a car, yeah. but and everything in between. And it's a great, he's very, very well informed. He's very smart. Um, he does his due diligence. He does way more than I do about researching and stuff. He he starts talking about like soundtracks and directors and where you might have seen these actors in other yeah. films of the like. It goes all out. He goes very deep and it's so good. It's so good. So definitely check it but out. But you digress. But I digress. Uh, he actually posted that he had just purchased Batman Hush and, and enjoyed it. So I, I basically sent him a message on Facebook saying, you made me buy this. This is your fault. So. I ended up going on to the Apple Store and picked it up, bought it as a three-pack with uh, a couple other Batman animated flicks that I haven't seen yet. But I watched it. I was, you know, originally the comic book, it's based off the comic uh, run by Jim Lee uh, with his drawing. Good Uh, choice. I love Jim Lee. Jim Lee is my favorite comic book artist going back from the early 90s with the X-Men. But he drew this comic from 2002 through 2003 while the Hush Mm storyline ran, introducing a new character. Uh, so this is the animated film based on that. The voice acting is really, really good. It focuses a lot on Catwoman, which I kind of liked, which is different. Yeah. Um, because in the comic books, spoiler if you haven't read the comics, but it's going to hold true to the animated film too. It's when Batman reveals his identity to Catwoman because they have they they have been playing for lack of a better term cat and winged mouse game between the two of them will they won't they and then they finally like admit their feelings for each other mm-hmm. and try to start a relationship and he basically reveals him that he is bruce wayne and uh they focus a lot on nightwing and uh, they have a little bit of damian wayne who wasn't around mm-hmm. wasn't created uh when the original comic came out so there were there are some changes to the story um but i really enjoyed it they You're not a stickler for source material. Um, I am to an extent. They there was a yeah. couple of twists at the end that I was not a huge fan of, but it's not enough to make me not like, like it. Yeah, yeah, like it's good. It's just I wish they would have done it a little bit different. Yeah. Um, they included some characters that they didn't in the original comic book series, which mm-hmm. was fine. Um, but all in all, it was it was uh it was interesting. So fun fact about the original comic series or the the arc. I should say, that ran from uh, 2002 to 2003. In that storyline, Batman is, it's Hush is the villain. It Mm -hmm. introduces Hush. And he, Hush, in the middle of the arc, unmasks to reveal himself to be Jason Todd. And it's a a fake out because it's actually Clayface pretending to be a grown-up Jason Todd. But the reaction was so positive for him being Jason Todd, they actually brought back Jason Todd as the Red Hood because of that comic book arc. Hmm. So it's, it's kind of like it was like the return of Jason Todd before he actually returned. Um, but I thought it was really cool, so definitely check it out. I give that uh, probably a 7 out of 10. Yeah. Uh, maybe a 6.5 if I really think about it. Somewhere between a 6.5 and a 7. Um, Depends but it's, on what day it is and how you Yeah, feel. It's, 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 again, I think the twist kind of... I'm trying to look at it objectively because... The twist at the end kind of not soured me on it, but it was a little for me a little bit underwhelming. Okay, and I'll tell you offline if you want yeah. to hear about it because I don't want to spoil it for people that might watch it. But um, yeah, definitely give it a give it a view. It's really really good. So check that out. I gotta check. I gotta check that out. How much? How much did that Batman three pack? Go uh, for? I think it was twenty nine ninety nine. Oh, it was three bad. movies, ten bucks, 10 bucks a movie. Yeah. And uh, it was like Gotham by Gaslight, and I forget what the third one is. But is, I there, is there one with Zatanna, like a Justice League Dark one that they did? Batman yes, that in? one's really good too. Is that, is that one in that or no? I don't believe it's part well, of. The I, I want to see that one. I haven't had a chance yet. To yeah, definitely that check that out. That's a good one too. But uh, I want to say thank you to Paul Williams again for recommending this. Uh, he didn't really, but kind of like as a as side effect, he recommended it, whether he realized that he was doing it or not. But again, check out his podcast. We'll link it in the show notes. It's called What Lurks Behind Podcast Zero. So check that out. When we come back, I'm going to run through the San Diego Comic-Con highlights as far as what I thought were highlights. Jay Free is going to surprise me because I've decided not to watch this year. 
and KB is going to just react from it. And we'll, we're going to break it down, uh, pretty much some, from some miscellaneous stuff to DC to Marvel and everything in between. Actually, that's all I really took note of, but we'll, we'll check on that after the break. So we'll be back after these messages. Hey guys, I want to quickly tell you about 4041 media. It is a collection of podcasts in the southeastern Massachusetts region, including For Your Geek, and we are proud to be part of the 4041 Media family. So check out 4041media.com to listen to For Your Geek, or if you happen to be a movie buff, check out Movie Theater Time Machine, or if you want to know why the crazies do the crimes that they do, check out the Psych Your Crime podcast. 4041 Media, by listeners, for listeners. And welcome back to the Free Your Geek podcast. I am still Jay Free, and he is still KB. KB the Geek. So let's go into, I made some notes. That's Mr. KB the Geek. Sure. Okay, Mr. KB the Geek. That's super weird. Okay. Um, I want to go now and talk about some of the things that went down at the 2019 San Diego Comic-Con. And I'm going to include a bunch of the links in the show notes. So if you want to read the full articles, you certainly can. But let's start off with some mis- miscellaneous news. Okay. This comes via the rap. So, KB, have you ever played the video game uh, The Witcher? Yes. Okay, so The Witcher, which is starring uh, Henry Cavill, mm-hmm. Superman, uh, the, sh- the showrunner of The Witcher saying the Netflix series will never adapt the video games. It's only going to be based on the actual books. Um, but if the show ever moves past the story laid out in the books, like Game of Thrones did, showrunner Lauren Schmidt Hischer, I cannot read her name, says fans should definitely not expect it to mine the games for material. She is quoted as saying, extreme long vision is no, we will not start adapting the games. Uh, what else did she say? I can only attack one season at a time. I'm so excited for this one. The rest kind of makes up my mind. The rest kind of makes my mind explode right now. If someone says what happens in season seven, sure, I have thoughts. Fingers crossed that we get there. So I just I included this because we knew kind of like the backlash from the mm-hmm. Game of Thrones side yeah. of the house. How do you feel knowing that at least for the time being they're going to try to stick to the books as close as possible, or at least follow that storyline, the general storyline? I've never read the books. I don't know. Have you Have you read? No, any I have books? not. Okay, have not. so. That tells me something right there. It's like, that doesn't seem like a good idea. Because Witcher, I don't know how popular Witcher was before the games. You get what I'm saying? Like, so is that story good enough? Like, has that, you know, like Game of Thrones, has that sold well enough to to generate well, buzz? Well, it, it, was, it was popular enough to make a video game out of. So, so yeah, let's I, look at I it guess. that way. I guess, yeah. I guess and I, I just, I wanted to include that because I feel like, you know, between that and the the kind of the comparison to how Game of Thrones would be. Those are, t- you know, Game of Thrones is a very lauded television series. It's very mm-hmm. popular. It's ingrained in pop culture now. Similar to our next news bit, where yeah. we talk about The Walking Dead. Uh, following The Walking Dead panel at San Diego I Comic-Con, about this one. AMC released a teaser for what will be a trilogy of films focusing on Andrew Lincoln's Rick Grimes. Have you heard about this? Nope, not this. The teaser reveals that Rick's return is going to be seen <clears throat> Only in theaters. Wow. So they're not going to be AMC movies on the AMC channel. It's as AMC films or whatever. It's actually going to be released as feature films in the theater, according to what they said on San Diego Comic-Con. What are your thoughts on that? It's interesting. It's an, it's an interesting uh, way for them to go about it. I thought they were going to kind of stick to like TV movies, you know? I think so too, but I think it's a great idea. Like, So say what you want. I, I think the previous season of The Walking Dead under... I think her name is Angela Kang. It's gotten a lot better. Way better. Yeah. And I think that if, if they keep on this upward trend where it gets getting it can bring more viewers mm-hmm. back, I think releasing it in the theaters is just a great way to make a little bit more money. Depending to, on to see some zombies on the big screen and how much the did it cost and, AMC to, to make these films and if they can get their return yeah. on investment by putting it in the theaters. Yeah. And they're already making they're already making T V episodes, so it's it's a lot of the same stuff that you're gonna be using. I mean, it's a lot of this a similar you know, makeup artists and, and, and designers and, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like it wouldn't cost them a ton. Maybe it's a cash grab to help out uh, Kirkman because he ended the Walking Dead series. We still so. don't know why. Yeah, so maybe maybe <laughs> so, it's like, hey, man, like, you know, let's get him a little bit of extra cake. Because I, I had also heard, do you have any more Walking Dead news? No, but I, we can talk Cause about Because I, I know the, the speculation of Lauren Cohen coming back. Yeah. Because, let's, let's talk because about that, yeah. uh, Whiskey Cavalier got yep. canceled, which very surprising because I watched it. 
it was actually really good. A lot of fan, a lot of people liked it. A lot of people liked the show. I think just TV gets a little crowded, especially in the networks with with their shows, and they and end up canceling. It comes some. down to ratings, yeah. and it comes down and yeah. ratings. You know, we we've talked about this. I think on like years ago. I think the ratings, the Nielsen ratings, are very archaic for mm-hmm. the the times that Sometimes. we live in with streaming and on demand yeah. and DVR and YouTube and and yep. I, there's going to be another metrics. Yeah, you can't just go to, based off on the TV and they watched it live at that time. Like, right. it, it, it's kind of crazy. There's going to be, a, you know, we talk about YouTube and now you play any YouTube video, you're going to get like 45 seconds of ads before, or, you know, yeah. 30 seconds of ads before you can skip to the video. And that's the way advertising is moving, you know, mm-hmm. or the same thing like you're watching a video and then it comes in almost like a little, um, mm-hmm. what's the word I want? Like a, a poster on the bottom of the. Yeah, little poster, yeah. I can't think of the name, like a banner, a banner. Yeah, banner. On the, that's the word I was looking for on the bottom of this, the video. So like, hey, click on this to buy, you know, Coke Zero, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, the other piece of news, which we have already kind of talked about, uh, it's going to be Michonne's last season. Yep. So I'm curious to see how they're going to handle that moving forward. Yeah, I wonder what she's going to jump into I'm next. Well, well, I think I think the actress is, she's got tons of stuff at her disposal. She's got Black, her- Black Panther 2, yeah. obviously. Yep. I was just going to say that. Um, but... I wonder how they're going to handle her. They're going to handle J, uh, JJ, I think his name mm-hmm. is. And then, uh, or Rick Jr., RJ, not JJ, RJ. Rick Rick Jr. And uh, uh, Judith, how are they going to handle Because, again, if Rick's not coming back to the show, and Michonne, the only person Judith knows as mom, unless they do another time jump and Judith is like... A teenager? Yeah, and be like, I'm going to stay behind now. Like 16, something like that. I don't know what they're going to do with that. Or sticks with Negan. Kind of replacing Carl. Kind yeah, of I don't. I don't know what they're going to do with that. No, and and that's what I kind of like about the show now. It's 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 it seems like it's taken some fresh direction. It feels like, and I know th- I I've heard some people saying, "Oh, they stopped watching," and uh, kind of complaining about you know the the ca- you know all the main characters getting killed and that kind of thing. Um, but at the end of the day, it's been ultimately what's been better for the show. That well, they moved on, and I think I think a lot of it is that you know it took it took a while to get the ball rolling. Yep. Um, you know, we saw just off the top of my head recently, within the last few seasons, the loss of Carl. Mm-hmm. We saw the lo- the loss of Jesus. Mm-hmm. The Rick Grimes uh, left, but we know he's still alive. Yep. Uh, Lauren Cohan, Maggie left. So I think a lot of the major characters, and we we have introduced to very exciting new characters mm-hmm. and interesting characters. We just haven't had the time to grow to love them. Mm-hmm. And I think you know the, the, the show kind of got into a lull, and some of the actors, I think it was a lot uh, a lot more political. Like the actor that plays Jesus was like, Jesus isn't doing much in the TV show versus what what he did in the comics. Yep. Like I want to move on, and that was his choice because of the character he did wasn't. He wasn't enjoying the character It becomes character stale. Arc. It becomes very stale. Because it's probably exciting at first when he got on the show, hit show, Walking Dead, you blah, do your blah, blah, blah. You, you, read, you read where yeah. the, the arc is going. And then after that, then when you don't see that arc anymore, it's And like, we're going in a different direction. We're going to do this. Yeah. So I, yeah. I think it's going to be interesting seeing where the next season goes. The trailers came out. We're, we're, gonna, we're not going to talk about any of the trailers no. per se because um, I don't want to play them, uh, You know, just the audio of them. Um, but I do want to move on. We, we're going to go in more to the superhero realm right now. Okay. We're going to start with DC. And this is via superhero hype. Um, and it's odd. Uh, you know, we were talking about the world premiere of Batman Hush, which is the mm-hmm. animated film we just talked about a little bit. At the conclusion of the world premiere uh, panel for Batman Hush, Warner Brothers announced three new DC animated films for next year. The first is going to be based upon Mark Miller and Dave Johnson's Elseworlds, Elseworlds tale Superman Red Sun. Okay. So it's basically following uh, Red Sun, Superman Red Sun in early 2020, Warner Brothers is going to release Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. That's going to be a good one. That may be based off the Dark Side War uh, arc from Jeff Johns' Justice League run. Yeah. So it's a good run. There's two like really cool and different animated films. Uh, coming from DC. Did you say there was a third one. Uh, I I don't I don't know uh, what the third one is yet. Um, they announced the third one. Yeah, I don't believe so. But Red Sun, you know, basically yeah. Superman's ship crash lands in Russia, and he's raised yeah. as, as a Russian. Like that's going to be crazy. And then you know the, I think from the New Fifty Two, one of the only good things I think from the New Fifty Two, was the Justice League, League run dark. of the, of yeah. the Dark Side War. So. If that's going to be the Justice League dark version of that, I think that's going to be kind of cool. Yeah, you got Constantine, Zatanna. I'm trying to think of everybody else. Uh, Swamp, is Swamp, Swamp Thing in there? Or, or, yep, Swamp uh, Thing, yeah. 
Uh, Martian Manhunter, I think, is part of Justice League Dark. I'm not sure. I don't. No, I don't think so. Uh, oh, look at that. We got a picture right here. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dead Man. Yeah. Yep. yep. I don't know. We'll yeah. we'll uh, we'll go through yeah, we'll, Raven perhaps. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll take a look at that later on because I I've always loved that. Like when that when that came out, that that comic was just awesome. So that was one of my favorites. It was. It's you know. It's it's different. It's yeah. it's basically Justice League, but with magic, and it's yeah. it's you know spirits and and witchcraft. It's really really cool. I and it's it's a different take other than the just the. You have the the monkey there too. Oh, uh, the detective. The uh, oh, I can't think of his name, but yeah. I know who you're talking yep. about. Um, but let's move over from the animated side of the house to the CW stuff. Okay. Uh, via coming soon, it says straight from the Batwoman panel at San Diego Comic Con. The executive producers for the series have announced that the Batman supervillain Hush will appear in the Batwoman series. So this is kind of like Hush-centric in the last three things we were talking about. But I just think that's really, really cool because we saw Gotham uh, we, we on Fox. Gotham recently came to an end. We did see Thomas Elliot, who, spoiler alert, is Hush in the comic books. Yep. We saw the character of Thomas Elliot in Gotham as a school a schoolyard friend of Bruce Wayne, but we never see, see him grow up to be Hush. Never see him after that. Yeah. So I think it's kind of cool that they're going to be introducing this character and it's going to be a Batwoman-specific villain. So that already has me, hooked me into to, mm-hmm. to watch the Batwoman series. If watching this badass, you know, uh, Kate Kane superhero isn't like awesome enough, the fact that they're going to bring in one of my favorite villains, I'm done. Right up your alley. Speaking of, uh, via sci-fi wire arrows final season is progressing right Mm -hmm. now they're entering their final season and the story is going to pick up with oliver aka Stephen amell hitting the road with the monitor to start prepping for crisis on infinite earths so the rest of the team is seemingly left behind to keep star city together while the flash forward storyline of this season is going to focus on oliver and felicity's adult daughter mia helping save a collapsed future version of star city with her own team so Mark Guggenheim also addressed the recent news that Legends of, of Tomorrow star Brandon Ruth is going to be playing a version, not the version, a version of Superman on the crossover Crisis of Infinite Earths. Huh. Uh, he currently plays Ray Palmer in mm-hmm. Legends of yep. Tomorrow. So he's going to be playing both the Adam and Superman in the crossover. Other names that have been announced, Burt Ward is going to be playing a role in the crisis. Really? They're bringing in potentially Tom Welling to play another mm-hmm. version of Superman. So I think it's it's kind of interesting. But Brandon Routh ended up showing up with the Kingdom Come era uh, symbol of the Superman mm-hmm. symbol at Comic-Con. So is it going to be the Kingdom Kingdom Come I swear version? they do all this stuff intentionally just I to think get it's people. so yeah. amazing. I, I'm just I'm going to be such a fan to see the way this crossover plays out. Uh, Arrow is kind of what, you know, after Smallville was the next big superhero show on the WB slash CW mm-hmm. and it kind of reinvigorated it brought out the Flash, Flash it brought out uh, DC Legends Super of Tomorrow Girl. Supergirl Black Lightning it's bringing in Batwoman so I'm very very happy that the show is going out it's not overstaying its welcome it's going to go out theoretically on top it's done its so job to of building it's, it yeah. it's, the way I look at it it's kind of like it's like anything else it's like hey you know like Superman built the DC like we have these awesome other DC characters mm-hmm. if you're really into Aquaman or Wonder yeah. Woman or check these out yeah. you know or, or the Green Lantern Corps or the Flash like Superman was kind of like the the hero you know Batman was one of the the forefathers if you want to talk about the Ru- Mount Rushmore of DC heroes the the ones that started it Green Arrow started this whole superhero thing mm-hmm. on the CW and the show it, it's 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 been called you know AKA the Batman show because it takes a lot of the darkness. Mm-hmm. It's not the typical jovial Green Arrow. It's more of a darker, broodier yeah. Green Arrow. More like more like a Bruce yeah, Wayne. They Batman. The same thing with the Aquaman movie. True, very yeah, true. They, they, but but I think it down. I think in the, it, to set it up as almost like a real world setting with it being gritty and dark, kind of set that stage. And then the Flash came in and it's a little bit more of a lighter show. Mm-hmm. And then DC Legends came. I in. I think it was a lot lighter. Yeah, and DC Legends of Tomorrow is absolutely absurd and it's my favorite but without arrow there wouldn't be all these other shows so i mean i think i'm very happy to see the way they wrap up because again it didn't wait until the the ratings started declining mm-hmm. or they ran out of ideas they're like okay we're going this is going to be it we're it goes out the it. way it wants to and i think that's yeah. that's phenomenal 
It's always good for a show when it can go out the way And it's it wants. going out with a crisis storyline. It's going to be a shortened season, and it's going to end with the crisis. Can they say on, how many episodes? I believe it's going to be 8 or 12 or so something like that. So it'll be like pretty that. short. Yeah, but I think, and, and we already know, and of course they could swerve us, but we saw last season, mm-hmm. spoiler alert in case you haven't seen it, uh, three, two, one, the monitor shows up and says he's watched Oliver Queen die. So we know uh-huh. Oliver Queen dies protecting Barry and Supergirl, Kara, because they were both supposed to die, and basically Oliver Queen trades his life for their life, and, and changes, and, and that's what we're led to believe anyway. As the crisis is rolling on mm-hmm. this next season, so I'm very curious to see where they go. I'm very happy um, for all the actors just to you know to go out on top, and it's it's great. Nothing on the DC movie front. No, nope. We're gonna we're that's gonna switch hats though. I, again, this is the this is the list that I compiled. Uh, now I want to go through Marvel, and Marvel came out with their Phase Four list. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't have you read about this. Nope. Spit okay. it out. Starting May first, twenty twenty, Black Widow. Long wait. It's going to be starring Scarlett Johansson, also David Harbour, uh, Florence Pugh, and Rachel Weisz. Okay. Then November sixth, twenty twenty, The Eternals. Mm-hmm. It's going to be starring uh, Richard Madden from Game of Thrones. I don't know if that name sounds familiar mm-hmm. to you. Yep. But that's Rob Stark. Um, but it's also going to star Salma Hayek. Uh, who else was in there? Angelina Jolie. It's going to be interesting. Um, mm. I'm not. I'm not very familiar with the Eternals. I'm not either. But let's see if uh, Marvel is going to continue to uh, ride this wave, so to speak. Fall 2020. Okay. So around the same time, uh, maybe before the Eternals, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier coming to Disney Plus. Okay. It's revealed that uh, that'll be the first. Sh- the yes. first show. Okay. Daniel Brühl is going to reprise his role from Captain America: Civil War as Helmet Zemo. Oh, cool! And he's going to be in that. And Falcon will be wearing the Captain America uniform. So he is. He's, he cap. basically says he doesn't know how the shield and the wings are going to both fit on his back, but they're going to figure that out. So that's going to be kind of interesting. Thoughts on that before we continue to move on? That's that's all for 2020. Now we're going to honestly. To- I'm most excited about that show. I agree. I agree. You know, and they're using both both actors, right? Both, yeah, both the same actors. I think all these Disney stream Disney Plus shows are going to be using the MCU actors. Correct, and it's going to be interesting because they're going to tie into the movies. So Lots let's watch. Let's let's bring it through now to February twelfth, two days before Valentine's Day, twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. We're going to do Shang Chi and the Legend of the mm. Ten Rings. And what I what I uh, kind of noted for this is that it's going to be you know Shang Chi again, not familiar with the character. But they said they're going to announce Tony Leung as the real Mandarin. So, okay. so other than the kind of fake Mandarin we, we got had, in yep. Iron Man three, uh, we're going to get the real one in this one, which is going to be kind of interesting. Then we go from February of twelfth, twenty twenty one, to spring twenty twenty one. Wandavision on Disney Plus. It's going to be both uh, Scarlet Witch and the Vision. And put a note in that because how is Vision going to be around in WandaVision? We're going to, well, I have a theory about that. We'll get to it in a little bit. But also in spring 2021, Loki for Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be after he steals the Tesseract in Endgame and follow him yep. from that point on. So it's that past Loki. So that, it's yeah. going to be a past Loki, but it's going to be a new timeline Loki. And it'll still be Tom Hiddleston? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And he he actually just shared, I believe, on his either his Twitter or his Instagram, the logo for it, and it looks so badass. So yeah. I'll, I'll pull that up for you, and I'll show yeah. you that a little bit later. Um, so that's spring of 2021. Also in the spring 2021, which might tie into WandaVision, Doctor Strange in The Multiverse of Madness is going to be the name hmm. of the... Scott Derrickson's going to be returned to direct. It's also going to feature Elizabeth Olsen as the Scarlet Witch, maybe being an apprentice to Doctor Strange, and maybe that's how they're going to return the Vision to the main sounds, continuity. Sounds interesting. So I'm very, I'm very excited about that. I feel like the Doctor Strange movie. I don't think it's as strong as some of the other like still introductory good. movies. It's, good. it's still good, but I feel like kind of anchoring it with another star from the Avengers yeah. will only help. Yeah, you know, Doctor Strange, Wong, and Scarlet Witch. I think will be great. It'll, it'll definitely help. With so that. is that is that all the list? No, we're still that we're only no. in. We're going. To, we're going. To, Wait, dude, we're at halfway through. 2024? Uh, we're, going, we're still going. Let's talk about summer of 2021. There's another series coming to Disney+. Plus. This is going to be uh, Hawkeye? Nope. This is an animated series called What If? 
So following the comic books. I love the what if stuff. It's so, it's, so much fun. It's going to star Jeffrey Wright so as the fun. voice of the Watcher. It's going to be alternate takes on stories in relation to the MCU. That's so we talked about how Endgame kind of might create divergent timelines. What if these what if storylines, mm-hmm. what if these what if storylines focus on those alternate timelines? It's going to have a lot of the same actors from the MCU Voicing. reprising their roles in animated form. That was summer of 2021. Now we're going to be talking about fall of 2021. Hawkeye. I'm on, so on excited Disney for Plus. that. You one. know who they're inter- introducing? Yeah, Kate in that? Bishop. Kate Bishop is. I saw. In- I saw the. Uh, that's one of the things I did see was the. Um, was it the main the, the main logo they did for that? And it's just like a shadow of her. It's really it's really good. It, it, I, I'm so excited. That book. Have you read that book? I have not. The Hawkeye Kate, Kate Bishop. I have not. It's, oh, it's fantastic. It's one of Marvel's best reads ever. I love that book. Um, yeah, so Kate Bishop, I mean, it, I hope, but I would hope that they transition her somehow to the actual MCU. It'll be interesting. Well, again, yeah. I think with these Disney Plus series tying directly to, it's a way for them to introduce other yeah. characters without giving them their own solo movies. So when they show up, the avid it's, watchers... It's like the minor movies. leagues for the movies. Or just a yeah. different way of introducing... Like, again, yeah. why spend all these big budgets and have to go, you know, spend all this money on... On, on you know advertising mm-hmm. and marketing for these other movies for characters that they might not know as well if you can tie it into the existing characters mm-hmm. and go to Disney Plus and people are subscribing to that they'll be able to uh, easily get introduced yeah. to those characters so what that's else? what else we got we got a couple more pieces November 5th 2021 have you heard of anything about the new Thor movie yes Jane Foster yes Thor Love and Thunder it's also going to be directed by my boy uh uh, Mr. Waititi, who directed uh, Ragnarok. So uh, Natalie Portman's back. Fingers right? crossed, Korg is coming back, and Natalie Portman will officially return to the franchise with this film. It's also going to be featuring uh, Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie again. Yep. So I think it's going to be very interesting. And did you see, I, I don't know if you saw the picture, but Natalie Portman actually came on stage uh, at San Diego Comic Con and they gave her the hammer and she held the hammer above her I head. I didn't see that. Are they doing female Thor? I'll, they're definitely doing female I think it's Thor. Gonna, and they're going to go with Natalie Portman. That's going to be super interesting. Well, that comic, the the Thor comic, the the Jane Foster run that Jason Aaron did that run, and it it was amazing. He did there were two runs. There was like a short series, it was like thirteen issues, and then there was like another series that was like twenty something issues, and it ends up with the death of Jane Foster, which is really interesting. Now I'm not going to go too far and speculate on the movie, but what will be interesting is if they do follow the storyline of Jane Foster has cancer. And the hammer, like, stops her chemo from working. Well, it stops the the this stops the chemo. But from it working? drains her. It drains her. So in other words, she, she, so she uses, she has the hammer, right? Right. No, but does the does the hammer stop the cancer from spreading, or does it stop the chemotherapy from killing the cancer? No. What what ha- Yeah. What happens is when she has the hammer, she's fine. But when she's off the hammer, she ends up becoming weaker and weaker and weaker. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, so maybe they're gonna do something like that. But that was what was so interesting and captivating about the storyline is that you know this woman has cancer and you know that she picks up the hammer and there's a, there's a, a repercussion from it that you have to pay the price she's on and borrowed time almost. exactly exactly it just it's extending her life but it's also killing her at the same time very very interesting so that'd be interesting to see so the panel was running out of time at that point they yep. showed all the different uh, logos for the phase four then we talked. The Kevin Feige came out and talked really quickly about Phase Five, but didn't mention spe- too many specifics. He kind of mentioned it casually. Says, "Oh man, we're almost out of time, but we don't even we haven't even got a chance to talk about Captain Marvel Two, Black Panther Two, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Oh, what about the Fantastic Four? And we haven't even mentioned any mutants yet. So he kind of like set the stage at Phase Five, and it's going to be when they twenty twenty two. We'll probably see the Captain Marvel Two. Honestly, like this phase, like if you if you read off the movie list, I'm not excited. Well, let's let's talk about how you, let's gauge this excitement excitement because they're doing a reboot that I don't know if you heard about. But before the end of the panel, they brought out uh, Mahershala Ali, and I don't know if okay. that name sounds familiar to you. Mm-hmm. Have you seen Luke Cage season one? On yep, he played Cottonmouth. Yep. They said, oh, let's talk about his new movie. So he came out. The entire uh, the entire uh, room went uh, dark. And all of a sudden, you saw some letters come up on the screen, and it spelled out Blade. Uh, so he's going to be the new Blade, and they're rebooting Blade in Phase 5. And he's going to be... Well, I'm talking about this phase right now. No, me. I know. But what I'm saying yeah. is, again, you said you weren't excited about that. What about Phase 5, where we know we're going to have Captain Marvel 2, yes. Black yeah. Panther 2, 
Guardians Volume 3, possibly a Fantastic Four, introducing the mutants into the MCU and bringing in and rebooting the Blade franchise. Yeah, that's a lot of positive. That's a lot of good stuff there. But like I said, but this Phase 4, when you li- when you just, you know, list off the movie titles, I'm not overly like like Black Widow, yes, I'm excited for. Uh the Thor thing I'm excited for. Not Doctor Strange? Doctor Strange is eh. If it's if it's not done right, they said it's going to be a horror version of it. Is they going to do it a horror? It, it, it might be good. Slant. It might be good. But then the Shang Chi thing, like I don't know much about the character. He just doesn't seem to appeal to me. I've read a little bit of him, like cameoing and stuff. He just doesn't appeal to me. Um, and Eternals, maybe it's good, maybe it's not. But it's here's just, here's my here's my point know. to this. Here's my point to that. I'll, I'll counterpoint that. Let's talk about even Phase One and Phase Two of Marvel, Guardians yeah, of the Galaxy. Yeah, I know that you're going to pull pull out. Nobody, one. nobody, Ant Man. Yeah, Doctor Strange. Nobody really like those aren't like marquee characters that somebody off the street would know. Yeah. But because they 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 did well with Iron Man and the Avengers and Captain America and Thor, it's like, hey, look, yeah. we're putting our stamp of it's approval. It's similar to the Arrow thing, like you, like with the CW. It's like the Arrow Arrow started the whole thing, and then now the other shows are able to build off right. of that. But I guess my point is, is that. There were all these other films that were coming out that were like, oh, you know what? It's not a marquee character that somebody right yeah. off the street would know. It's going to fail for Marvel. And look what each of those films did. Each of them have been commercial successes. So I think, you know, when you have the right vision with Marvel at the helm, I don't think even if you're not as familiar with those characters and you're not necessarily excited, if like I wasn't excited. Guardians of the Galaxy, I was like, eh. Ant Man, I was like, ah, and those are two of my favorite characters now, or the two of my favorite films in the whole franchise of the Marvel. Ant Man, I was excited for when I saw. I wasn't. I was like, oh, this. I don't know much about this character. Okay, he can shrink. Big deal. But you put Paul Rudd in there, you give it a little bit of that comedic, you know, flavor, and then he's charming as hell. And you have a decent storyline. You have some marquee actors to bring you in. You, you know, again, it's it's all all the movies are pretty much cookie cutter. But it's just for me, it's like if you if you're gonna do Shang Chi, right? In my mind, I'd rather do something like rebooting Daredevil. But we are—we don't know what that's going to happen. Maybe I know because of I, licensing with with, or maybe yeah. a Moon Knight. I would be down for that. Yeah, Moon Knight would be awesome too. But my my point is, is that I don't think you can write off characters that just because you're like, oh, I'm not excited for that because there's certain things that you weren't necessarily excited for in the first place. Like for yeah. me personally, like I said, Ant Man, Doctor Strange, and Guardians. I had really like I'm like I'm gonna see them because I want to see the overall story within Marvel. I'm not as familiar with these characters, but whatever. Yeah. Like I, I don't mean, I don't care. I was excited for Doctor Strange, but see I was. But again, I, you're you're more for different for, reasons, right? For different reasons. But uh, but again, you you can say anything else. Yeah. You can you know for any of those other characters, you know Captain Marvel. I knew very little about Captain Marvel, but I'm already like okay, it's a Marvel film. She's gonna play a part in the next phase in Endgame. And, I need to watch it. You loved it. it was and great. I loved it. So I'm like, I think, I think the the argument can be made that even though you might not be excited per se, because you're like, what are they gonna do? I'm not really a fan of this character. Yeah, they can turn it on its head. My point though is, you know, the the whole was it the the law of averages where at some point something's gonna fail. Of course, but I, I think I think each decision is being made. You know. Disney's been around for a long time. They're oh, very I get it. Oh, I, I get that. Yeah. I don't think, you know, I read somewhere that I forgot what it was. I don't know the exact number. So somebody. Nobody's making wrong. money in films other than Disney right now. Right. Basically, if you want to put it that way. Well, my point was, correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody's listening, but I believe there is a report out there. that said back when Disney bought Marvel, mm-hmm. and, you know, for the studio and, and whatnot, they paid three billion. Yeah. And here we are, however many years later, what was it, 2005, the first Iron yeah. Man came out? Yeah. Something like that. Like 14 years later or 15 years later, they've already made 13 or 14 billion. So they've already increased their profit $10 billion yeah. based on the film. Over the so past, what, 15 years? 15, even yeah. say even say like 18 years. Say they bought yeah. it a couple of years prior. I, I don't know when. A few billion a year. Let's face it, three but, films, but one's usually a billion dollars. $10 billion dollar dollars over yeah. the course of 20 years. That's, that's you know, half a billion dollars a year profit like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna like turn a blind eye to any of these movies until i actually see it in the theaters and be like or even see the trailers and be like oh this does not make me excited at all yeah so i'm just going off the names that i hear like you know i i i just want to i just wanted to i just wanted to feel a big character well-known character i think they're bookending that with black widow and you know what actually what was kind of interesting was i didn't hear uh anything on the next Spider-Man. So it sounds like we're not going to see Spider-Man again for a while. It's possible. Or maybe they don't, saying, have it all, they don't have it all planned out Maybe right 
Maybe, maybe that's going to be the tail end of Phase 5. Maybe. So, or maybe, I, I don't know. We'll see. Tom and, Holland will have a walker. Well, hey, maybe he'll be in college at that point. <laughs> uh, but again, from a timing perspective, yeah. I think it'll work out great because, you know, Tom Holland is, what, 20-something years old? So mm-hmm. if he's like a young 20-something-year-old kid, like, you know, he's 25, 26 by the time the next movie rolls around, I'd be okay with that. Because then we can see him kind of like struggling or, mm-hmm. or how the world is dealing. Maybe he goes into hiding because now, again, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Far From Home, at the end of the movie, his identity gets revealed to the world via J. Jonah Jameson. And, and I think it's funny because you drop something like that and now it's like, oh, no, we're not going to see this for another four years. You know what I mean? Like it, it's. But maybe that leads into him like kind of laying low. Maybe he yeah. takes maybe he takes, uh, you know, an alias as Ben Riley. Yeah. And that's how you can kind of work in a nod to the uh, to the Scarlet Spider storyline or or whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, but I, I think I think it's still a very exciting time. I think now that we've had this huge epic, I think we had a little bit of time to breathe. We can still kind of decompress with all the end game stuff, uh, far from home. And now we got you know a good uh, about a year away from the next film. So I think we, we're it's kind of we're funny good. going a year without a Marvel movie. <laughs> But I think I think to your point, that's what's going to happen. It's going to give us a reset to say, okay, here's. It's almost like another yeah. book. Here comes the next book. We're going to write this whole other huge epic. That and we're I and I hope they do it. And I hope they hope they get it right. We'll but, see, uh, listeners. Let us know what you think on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. A Free your geek. Uh, follow us on all of that. Follow us on our website, J Free the Geek. Make sure to check out forty forty one. Thank you. 4041media.com. That's 4041media.com. For listeners, by listeners. KB, hit them with the catchphrase, and then uh, we're going to get out of here. Get your geek on. You're still here. It's over. Go home.